This programme is the Petro Canada Lubricants Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli. Hello and welcome to a glorious Donington Park for the season opener of the 2019 Petro Canada Lubricants Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli. We've got a stunning grid of cars assembled for Donington Park. Lots of new faces, lots of returning front runners as well. It's set to be another cracking season. Well, uh, Mark and Jake McAleer then, an exciting season ahead for the two of you, I think. Uh, Mark, we'll start with you. Uh, back for another season, you can't get enough of this championship, can you? Yeah, I mean, it's a great championship. I think we all know that by now. Um, affordable, um, but the big thing is it's, it's very competitive. You know, if, if you're doing any good in this championship, then you know, you know you're doing quite well for what you're doing, really. It's, uh, it is a very, very good championship. A few things have changed for you this year, though, haven't they? Um, you're in a new car for 2019, which I believe this is the first race that you'll have in that car. What's it like so far? Yeah, it's been great. Um, we've obviously, we've got pole with it, so we don't really get any better than that. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, we've got a lot to learn with it. Um, we don't really know, know how it's going to work its tyres in a hot day such as it is today. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's going to be a learning curve, but um, yeah, at least we've started on the right foot. Well, joining you on the front row will be your son, Jake. And Jake, this is an exciting season for you too, jumping up into Class 1. How are you finding it so far? Well, I think, to be honest, jumping up into Class 1, you don't really notice it in qualifying, you just go a bit faster. Um, it'll more come in, the ra in race one um, in about an hour's time in terms of starting further up the grid. I was saying earlier, I normally start about five, six rows back, so this time there'll be no one in front of me, so it'll be pretty interesting. But yeah, ask me after race one how the jump up is, and I'm sure I'll be able to tell you better then. I'm intrigued to know, is there a plan going into turn one? Because the two of you are sharing the front row together, the first race you've raced together in the same class. Anything could happen, couldn't it? Yeah, well, neither of us have done a race start with these cars either. So it's a bit of a lottery because everyone else behind us has had their cars for at least a year. So the plan is to get off the line cleanly. And I think if we can get around lap one in a one, two, whichever way around, we'll be more than happy with that. Um, we just want to get through cleanly and try hold yeah. station, really, don't we? That's the dream. Uh, well, Matt Kyle Henney making your debut in the championship here at Donington. Your circuit racing debut as well, though. Talk about jumping straight in at the deep end. Uh, are you enjoying it so far? Yeah, I really am, actually. Uh, first test day on Thursday here. Loved it. Made up loads of time since the first lap that I did, and I reckon there's more to give. Uh, you're in class two then for this weekend, a very competitive class as well. What are your sort of realistic aims for this weekend and then the rest of the season? Well, obviously finishing. Um, I think I've got it in me to come maybe in the middle, possibly. I'll be really, that'll be, oh yeah, I'll be over the moon with that. Perfect weather here at Doddington Park for our opening race of the season and a perfect start for the McAleer family. Mark qualifying on pole from Jake, Michael Price is next from Pete Morris and Steve Cheatham and Simon Clark. Chris Dyer and Andy Toon row four. Kevin Harrison and Glenn Broster on row five from James Cayley. Kevin Molyneux pole for class two from Trevor Lewis. Then Ross Morrison, Angus Archer, Steve Freeman, Paul Seagrave, Mark Horton, Matt Kyle, Henny, Richard Baston and Max Wollstenholm completing our grid. There's a gap on the grid where Mike Price should have been. So a little bit of creeping there from Jake McAleer who checks it all up. Mark gets away, there's a very good start by Pete Morris from the outside of row two, and Morris leads as they go down into Redgate. The red and black Strasser prepared car of Pete Morris, the former champion, leads from Mark McAleer, then Steve Cheatham, Jake McAleer, Simon Clark is next. What a start. Now, the class twos, Angus Archer, he's repassed by Ross Morris. That's Trevor Lewis in white as well in the mix. Kevin Molyneux in the 
deeper of the two yellow covered cars is the leading class two runner. Immediately behind him is Glenn Broster, so that's a good start by Kevin Molyneux getting up ahead of one of the class one cars, but Broster having a look on the inside line there to try and get back past. Superstar all round. Excellent driving standards going into Redgate on a, in a very evenly matched field and a, a packed grid of cars. It's an engine problem we hear for Michael Price, which is stopping him from having a first outing this season. Big, big shame, given all the work that goes on over the winter. Steve Freeman watches the uh, inside line of Glenn Broster going through. So Broster getting back up ahead of the Class 2 leader. Try and get stuck into some of the Class 1 runners now and enjoy his race. But Kevin Molyneux, pole position for him in car number 41 in Class 2. He's got a good lead, actually, isn't he, after lap one? Let's have a look back. Steve Freeman in second. Freeman looking relatively clear in second place as well in the blue boxster running second in class. There is Simon Clark in the white and blue Cayman chasing Jake McAleer. Kevin Harrison is next up, followed by Andy Toon and Chris Dyer. Angus Archer involved in the podium battle for class two in these early stages, and Trevor Lewis immediately ahead of him. Angus, like Kevin Molyneux, coming into the championship after the time in the BRSCC Porsche Championship, which has a fairly long history as well, originally starting with the 924s. Chris Dyer, first driver to grab a, a podium in the championship with the Cayman. There is another new driver, Mark Horton, enjoying himself. Mark qualifying seventh in class, so good qualifying from Mark as the field come through the Fogarty S's and onto the Tom Wheatcross straight once again. Getting very slightly downhill. Our uh, onboard shots as well as our outfield filming, showing you the undulations of this place. If you've not been to Donington, I heartily recommend it as a day out. It's run by MSV, Jonathan Palmer's concern. It means that it's clean and tidy. The facilities are top notch. The hospitality in all the areas, absolutely superb. And of course, some great racing on track, which we're seeing today from the Petro Canada Lubricants Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli. There is Max Wollstenholm having a good run. Another newcomer with the Newcomers insignia on the, the back of the car, and he's chasing these two. Now, it's been a swap between these two from qualifying to where they are now because Matt Carl Henny in yellow and black qualified ahead of Richard Baston, but the 944 is ahead at the minute. Chris Dyer's dropped back, hasn't he? So, Chris Dyer now is down behind Glenn Broster. Pete Morris still the race leader. Mark McAleer is in second from Steve Cheatham, Jake McAleer in fourth, Simon Clark right behind him, and then it is Kevin Harrison rounding out the top six, down in towards Ripgate they go. McAleer, I guess, was uh, would have been keeping fingers crossed that it was going to be a, a one-two for the McAleer family. They certainly did a super job in qualifying, but that uh, luck initially not with them at the start of the race. But Mark McAleer still in a handy second place at the minute as Matt Carlhenny looks down the inside line here. Lovely pass there by Matt Carlhenny into Redgate, makes the pass on Richard Baston and reclaims his position. And he'll be buoyed by that. Remember, it's Matt's first race, first circuit race here. So some nice dicing going on for him. And his dad, Peter, who races in the Porsche Carrera Cup Great Britain, will no doubt be smiling at that move if he saw it. I'm guessing he'll be in or around the pit lane as we watch Simon Clark still trying to deal with Jake McAleer. These two dicing for podium position in class two. Steve Freeman, who did have a, a fair old gap over Trevor Lewis earlier on, so Lewis is closing in on Steve Freeman, so a battle on for podium in class two. Great sounding cars as they go past our locked camera on the pit wall, and Trevor Lewis being challenged now by Andy Toon, who's obviously had some sort of moment earlier on. The Class 1 car getting stuck into the Class 2s. We've got James Cayley immediately ahead of this group of cars, but Steve Freeman still there in third position in class. 
class goes to number four. Andy Toon, former champion, of course, class two champion, outright champion in 2016. And learning the rope still in class two, in class one, I should say. James Cayley up ahead. And you can see Angus Archer in the white and blue boxster closing down now on Trevor Lewis. So three cars having a very good battle indeed for third place. It's Kevin Molyneux still leading class two at the moment from Ross Morris in second. Three cars for third place and the yellow, red and black car down behind them is Paul Seagrave, the number 45 championship regular as now Trevor Lewis looks down the inside line of Steve Freeman on board with Angus Archer watching this manoeuvre. It was very well timed from Trevor Lewis who pops up the inside line and Angus Archer I think has read that well too. Archer going through to try and take fourth position. We watch to the left, there's a shadow there and Steve Freeman holds on to the, the place but goes wide into the corner, They're giving each other room which is super to see and Freeman runs a little bit of curb there. This is bringing Paul Seagrave into the mix as well. Superb racing for podium positions here in class two and Trevor Lewis read that well. And if they squabble behind him, he could start to stretch his legs and maybe move away. He certainly got, and that's Mark McAleer off the side. Mark McAleer has retired, the pole man is into retirement. Oh no, what a shame for McAleer. What a shame for us because he was getting on terms with Pete Morris. So Mark McAleer is out of the race. That is such a pity, but not for Pete Morris, who's away down the road. Now we've got Jake McAleer second from Simon Price. So it looks like Steve Cheatham's dropped back. Now Matt Kyle Henney's got away, got a bit of bodywork on the track there, and that bodywork belongs to Kevin Molyneux in class two. It is all happening now on circuit. There's Matt Carlhenny going through shot. Richard Baston coming under pressure from Mark Hortley goes right into the gravel. Oh, that's not what we wanted to see for Mark at all. Such a pity, but he was having a, a good go there to try and deal with Richard Baston. He out-qualified him there as we pick up on Max Wollstonehole. So this is the battle for second position now, and it's Jake McAleer ahead of Simon Clark, who's posted the fastest lap of the race in the Cayman. These two have been together from the start of this race. It's a long race as well. Then we've got Matt Kyle Henney up ahead of Richard Baston, still having a, a super dice, and Richard closing in again. And I referenced that bodywork earlier on, which belongs to Kevin Molyneux, who we've lost from the lead of class two. It means that Ross Morris is the, you just saw a flash there of Molyneux's car parked up, ironically, with the other pole position sitter, Mark McAleer. So Kevin Molyneux and Mark McAleer, both pole sitters are out. Mark Horton is out of the race. Just those three retirements so far. There is Mark Horton's car, as if on cue, sadly. So let's just take stock of where we are. It's Pete Morris leading from Jake McAleer and Simon Clark overall. We're watching the battle between Matt Kyle Henny and Richard Baston for sixth and seventh place in class two. Ross Morris now the class leader from Trevor Lewis uh, with Steve Freeman, Angus Archer and Paul Seagrave in close proximity. And then the battle that we're looking at here and Baston having a good go, but has to go over the curbs. He'll lose a little bit of momentum uh, as they uh, go over the curbs. So Simon Clark with the fastest lap of the race so far in the Cayman seems to be set up well. Started six, well, started in, in P6 on the grid, which is the outside of the third row. But remember, we had the gap um, on the inside of row two where Michael Price should have been. And uh, I'll tell you what, it's going to be great once we see. I'm sure Michael will be back. Our next round is on the Grand Prix circuit at Brands Hatch. I hope Michael will be back for that, along with... Uh, Craig Wilkins, who won here at Donington Park in the opening race of last season. That will be good to see. Clark closing in now on Jake McAleer. Pete Morris looking, I've got to say, he's not overly comfortable out front, but he has got a bit of breathing space. Doesn't have to worry uh, too much uh, too much at this stage of the race. Morris lapping in the 116, uh, sorry, 115s, 115.1. Did a 114 in qualifying. In terms of lap times, Ross Morris is quicker than his qualifying time. He's in car three as we watch his dad. 
Pete in the 15. Simon Clark, the only driver to break into the 114s at the moment. That was on lap nine. And Jake McAleer in the 115s, uh, as is Steve Cheatham and Kevin Harrison. And indeed, Chris Dyer. Mark McAleer was on 114s as well before his untimely retirement from the race. So Mark McAleer very definitely had race winning pace after setting the pole time in this one. And we're just going to have to uh, see what the problem is and see whether we can get him out for race two. Meanwhile, this is Ross Morris up ahead of James Cayley, ninth and 10th in the race. Ross, the class two leader, James Cayley running in class one, is going to have a little nibble here. Ross goes to the outside line. He doesn't need to defend, of course. He knows that the class one car will have a little bit more speed, which it does. And Ross, of course, will be looking in his mirror. He'll know there's a big gap back to Trevor Lewis in second place at the minute. So good driving from, from both men. That little bit of bodywork still there, I think, from Kevin Molyneux's car. We did see it parked up and probably will again in the back of shot. There we are. Flash of uh, yellow in the background. Steve Cheatham up ahead of Kevin Harrison. Cheatham is in fourth place. Then Broster getting up through the traffic. Max Wollstenholm has been passed by him. And here is Ross Morris, the fastest lap in class for Ross as well. Maybe a little bit of a frustrating start for Ross. Qualified third in class two. Dropped back to fifth, as we saw from that onboard at the start of the race, but has really made the race his own. And a, a little bit of uh, Morris family history here in the offing as Pete Morris climbs up towards Coppice again still comfortable in the lead Ross Morris in the lead of class two as well so things nicely settled for our opening round of the 2019 Petro Canada Lubricants Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli Paul Seagrave in the mix as well Angus Archer still busy chasing Steve Freeman Steve in third place so this is the battle for the last podium position in class two and Angus Archer closing in. It's still Trevor Lewis in second place in class behind Ross Morris. Steve Cheatham and Kevin Harrison enjoying their dice with Chris Dyer in sixth position. Steve Cheatham in the Cayman coming down into Redgate. Kevin Harrison, is he going to have a look? Certainly comes offline. He thinks about having a look. He was just a tad too far back. You can see that when they come square onto the camera at Redgate. Now down through Hollywood once again. And Kevin Harrison trying to work out whether he can get past as we go back to the class two leader. Just looking at Cheatham and Harrison's lap times. He's no time to do that because Jake McAleer has caught Pete Morris out front now. Jake McAleer putting Pete Morris under pressure and looks on the inside line. There's a tag between the two of them. A big tag between the pair of them. And Jake McAleer has got the inside line. Well, now we go back to the third place battle in, in class two and it's still Steve Freeman is there. But just look back. They're side by side. Morris got the inside line back. And it's McAleer. And this is bringing Simon Clark into what is now a three-way battle for lead position as they cross the line. So it's Pete Morris, the leader. Jake McAleer is second. Simon Clark looks on the outside line as they come into Redgate. They're closing up on the Class 2 machines as well. That could come into play for sure. The Class 2 boys will be very wary of what's happening behind. They'll know that these cars are closing in. They'll see the blue flags from the marshals as well. But nonetheless, this is a worrying time potentially for Pete Morris, who has led the race since turn one so Morris leads Jake McAleer closing in again Jake's already had one nibble they call it a bite actually if you like on the inside line where they touched green flags waved there they've got to be mindful of those parked cars and the yellow flag zone I think along Stark is but look at McAleer wide sweep there through McLean's he's going to have a look here Angus Archer keeping a wide line um, and you'll see the blue flags being waved by the marshals there. Angus Archer generously giving up on that battle momentarily with Steve Freeman. He's, he's ceded a fair bit of space there to Steve to allow the Class 1 runners through. Very generous of him to do so. And Pete Morris is going to come down and, and try and get through on the inside of Freeman, who's still actually ahead as they go through the Fogarty S's. But Morris is still the leader, but under pressure here. Lights ablaze from Morris. He crosses the line onto the last lap here of the opening race of the year. And McAleer's having another go. 
McAleer around the outside, Jake McAleer. He goes very deep into Redgate and he's still fighting on the outside line. Can he get his nose in front as they go around Hollywood? Again, this is fair racing between the two. Morris is giving him room. McAleer's in through, now into lead position. Jake McAleer, the race leader. Pete Morris down to second. Simon Clark is in third place as they go into the old hairpin. But there's a wobble from McAleer who's off on the grass. McAleer down to third. He rejoins but does not look happy and Pete Morris gets the lead back. Jake McAleer had his nose in front, but it's Morris still there. Simon Clark is piling the pressure on. They're approaching the second place class two car of Trevor Lewis. But here comes Pete Morris up ahead of Simon Clark. Clark, remember, fastest man on circuit. And that car really coming on salt. Blue flag shown for Trevor Lewis. I don't know whether he'll stay in front of these two, but here they come. Down the straight for the last time in towards the S's. Morris has got a little bit of a gap. I think that's going to be enough. Past Trevor Lewis go both runners, first and second in the race. And it's going to be Pete Morris who exits Fogarty's after that superb start of the race. He had to earn it. Morris takes the win. Clark second. Jake McAleer is still running in third place. He'll be frustrated with his race for sure. But he'll get a podium finish. Steve Cheatham is behind Jake McAleer, he finishes fourth from Kevin Harrison. Chris Dyer will be the next car across the line in the red and black colours of the Strasser team. What a race we have had. There is Glenn Broster in seventh place. Andy Toon will finish in eighth. James Cayley, I think, completing the Class 1 runners, but it's Ross Morris who wins Class 2. Ross's win, there it is, win and fastest lap. Trevor Lewis will take second position in class. The car's already in victory lane and ready to chat to Andy, a delighted Pete Morris. That was a hard fought race. Fastest lap there in second position to Simon Clark. Let's hear from the guys after we've had the result here. Pete Morris, the winner from Simon Clark, Jake McAleer, Steve Cheatham, and Kevin Harrison, Chris Dyer in six. Then Broster and Andy Toon ahead of James Cayley. Ross Morris wins class two. Trevor Lewis second from Steve Freeman and Angus Archer. Paul Seagrave and Richard Baston next up from Max Kyle Henny with Max Wolstenholm completing our finishers, who are now with Andy. Well, Pete Morris, first victory of the season, uh, and what a race it was, what a start it was. Yeah, I bet it hooked up well, didn't I? I could see, I could see Jake creep, creeping, I mean, he might, he might have had a penalty, but, but, uh, but I think that played on his mind a bit. And I knew, I seen his dad struggling, I thought, well, I had a bit of a plan to get in front of them both by, the, by uh, Redgate. But yeah, it was great to bring it home, but the last, the last five laps, hard on the brakes, hard on the tyres, it was, it was a handful. Well, Simon Clark, a sixth place starting position. Honestly, did you expect to be on the podium at the end of the race? Uh, I didn't expect to be. It's not, it's not kind of historically a strong circuit for the Cayman here, I, I don't think. And but actually, yeah, the car's just got so much consistency. Like even towards the end of the race, it's just it still feels properly planted. Whereas you can see 911's just you know just moving around a lot. So yeah, wasn't necessarily expecting it, but over the moon to be there. I think it's a great start to the season. So we've got a couple of new sponsors on board, Free and Let's Connect. Both of the guys are here, so it's nice for them to see that. And obviously, big hand as well um you've given me a, a massive help so yeah no it's brilliant couldn't uh, couldn't really ask for more from sixth well jake mcleer you started second then you were fourth then you were second again and then you finished third so a pretty entertaining race all round yeah well um as i spoke to you before i made a bit of a mess of the getaway um pete just blew past both of us i think and then steve got me up the inside um i had a nice dice with him for quite a while I managed to get up the inside and then me and simon were having a really good battle um, my dad obviously pulled off we managed to pull in Pete and uh, yeah, I'm just really disappointed to be honest with you. Ross Morris, congratulations, a Group 2 victory here in the season opener. Probably, I think it's fair to say, not a victory you were expecting to be getting about halfway through the race. No, I got a terrible start off the line. I think I, I, think I went down to fifth at one point. So I, I tried to gain some places off and it left a big gap between me and first place when I eventually got back up to second. So as I was reeling him in bit by bit, bit by bit, he ended up just chucking it off. Bit of a mistake. and. That gifted me the win, really. Your car, thankfully, is in one piece and clearly was working fairly well because although the start didn't quite go to plan, you, you had good pace after that. Yeah, the car felt fantastic at the beginning of the race and then towards the latter start at the end of the race, the uh, tyres were going off, so I just had to manage the tyres a bit, slow the pace down. I, I had a bit of a gap behind me, so just coasting to the end then. Trevor Lewis, you started second in Group 2 and you finished second in Group 2. Uh, 
simple job really, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it just I uh, dropped to the very end of the train uh, on the first lap and they had to come all the way back through to get to second. So yeah, it's, it makes life more interesting. Life more, much more interesting when you have to overtake a few cars. Yeah. This is at least one of those circuits you can overtake at though, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah, it's not, a, it's not an out-and-out -out power circuit. You, you do get the overtaking opportunities, um, you know, particularly on, the, um, on some of the breaking points. Uh, but yeah, it's a lovely circuit. It's got ups and downs as well as lefts and rights. It's a cracking circuit to drive. Uh, well, Steve Freeman, congratulations. Podium on the, in the first race of the season. It was a fairly lively start though back in Group 2, wasn't it? Everyone seemed to be up and down uh, the order quite frequently in the first few laps. Uh, they did, yeah. I, I got a really good start actually. I was really pleased. I jumped a few places on the outside down to the um, first corner and that made all the difference. Um, holding on to it for the rest for the next few laps was a bit more challenging uh, with some faster cars behind but you know I'm really pleased with the result. Um, uh, Angus Archer was behind me and he was pressing me really hard but uh, you know we, we I managed to hold him off, managed to defend enough um, and I was a bit faster on the straights and he was a bit faster in one of the corners at the top so you know we, we, we kept our places which was really good. Well, Mark McAleer, things were going so well after qualifying. You qualified on pole with your son alongside you and then it all started to go a bit wrong once the race started, didn't it? Talk us through it. Yeah, well, that's car racing, isn't it? Um, obviously, it's the first time we try to get this car off the line and just struggle a little bit, just bogged down a little bit. But um, then, obviously, once the race got sort of into a bit of a rhythm, I thought we were quite sort of comfortable and I thought we can, no point in challenging Pete too early. We'll just leave it the last sort of three or four laps and then we'll have a go at it. But unfortunately, it wasn't to be. We just started to lose a little bit of power. Um, so we just thought we'd shut it down and uh, make sure there's no major problems. Yeah, I guess it's not worth damaging the car this early in the season. Are you, are you hopeful to get it out there for race two? I don't know. We'll have to wait till the uh, till the technicians have a look at it and see what uh, see what the diagnosis is. Well, uh, I'm with Chris Dyer now after what was an eventful first race of the season for him. Uh, Chris, your car's not quite in the pristine condition we saw it this morning. What happened? Well, just going up to McLean's and uh, momentarily car cut out for some reason, and I just lost my brakes. And I tried to avoid Andy, Andy Toon, and I just clipped him and spun him round, which I have apologised for. <laughs> so, yeah, it's done more damage to my car than I think is, but uh, we're having a good race up until then. Pete Morris on pole for this race from Jake McAleer. Simon Clark is on row two with Chris Dyer and Kevin Harrison behind them. Andy Toon and Glenn Broster completing row four. Fifth row, James Cayley and Ross Morris. Ross on class two pole from Angus Archer and Steve Freeman. Trevor Lewis and Paul Seagrave ahead of Matt Kyle Henney. Richard Baston and Max Wollstenholm completing the grid. So a few non-starters in this one. And a slightly reduced field, but still a quality grid nonetheless. Still with blue skies and Pete Morris on pole position with Jake McAleer. The lights are on. Out go the lights and we are racing. Pete Morris makes another blistering start from pole position. Jake McAleer getting bogged down. It's Simon Clark up into second in the white and blue Cayman. The black and yellow Cayman of Steve Cheatham round the outside line. Ross Morris, I think, has made a good start in class two once again. Angus Archer and Steve Freeman up at the sharp end as well. But it's Pete Morris that leads them down into the Craner curves and the old hairpin from Simon Clark, then Steve Cheatham. Chris Dyer is fourth. Jake McAleer fifth ahead of Kevin Harrison. Then it's Andy Toon, followed by Glenn Broster. I think behind Glenn Broster. We've got James Cayley on board with Angus Archer momentarily. Angus looking to try and get a podium in this one, having finished fourth in class in race number one. But a good orderly start, pretty much. Jake McLeod will probably kick himself once again, but we know he's got the pace to, to get up and challenge for podium honours once again, if not race winning honours. Angus Archer, quick looking cross down the straight, coming in two foggies. And there was a, a flash of white coming up on his outside. It's Trevor Lewis. You can see mid uh, towards the back of shot. Trevor Lewis in white makes the move. I think that was for second in class two. So Angus Archer down to third in class as Chris Dyer gets on the outside line. Steve Cheatham is side by side with him fighting it out for third place. So Dyer 
Dyer third, Clark in second immediately ahead of him. A quartet for lead position at the moment here in race two. But it's Pete Morris showing them all, showing the three Caymans a clean pair of heels at the moment. Simon Clark, remember, fastest lap in race number one. Now, are we going to see drivers breaking into the 14s here? The tyres, I, I suspect, may start to wear a little bit, so we might not see the, the lap times and pace that we saw, but we'll still have to keep an eye on everybody's time relative to each other. As Steve Cheeks tries to get back on terms with Chris Dyer, Pete Morris still out front in the... 997, the first driver to win in the 997 in the championship. There is Max Wollstenholm, not that far away at the minute from Matt Kyle Henney with Richard Baston in the 944 up ahead of them. Good racing wherever you look again, and it's a, a pair for the lead. Breaking clear now. Steve Cheetah back into third. Chris Dyer is in fourth place ahead of Jake McAleer. Then it's Kevin Harrison. Andy Toon follows them, Simon Clark going wide into Redgate here, thinking about what he's doing, he'll want to try and get a good run through Hollywood now, then down into the Craner Curves. He'll know he had the pace in race number one, and assuming he hasn't taken too much out of the tyres and car, as we get deja vu here, Matt Kyle heading down the inside line on Richard Baston, but Richard's going to go back on the inside line through Hollywood, Super racing between these guys. Max Wollstenholm wanting to get involved as well. But Richard Baston goes back in front. Those drivers racing once again for sixth and seventh position in class two. Very definitely two battles going on now. So it's first and second, Peter Morris and Simon Clark, and then Steve Cheatham and Chris Dyer immediately behind. This is the battle for the lead in class two. With Ross Morris up ahead of Trevor Lewis. Ross not as far ahead or making as much progress as he did in race number one. Trevor Lewis keeping him very honest at the moment. Remember, Trevor was second in our first race. Some of the drivers are going to have to be careful of track limits. Predominantly there, they've taken the sausage curbs out of the track there at Fogarty's. Um, there were a couple of issues, a couple of warnings in qualifying. There was nothing in race one, but we're starting to see drivers beginning to creep over the, a bit too far over the kerbs here. And MSV, who run this circuit, are very hot on that sort of thing. And we might well see some penalties and the black and white warning flag going out to drivers, just to let them know that the cl clerks of the course are watching. If you've ever been to any of these circuits and been lucky enough to see the clerks' room, it's a massive bank of screens. They can see what's going on. MSV circuits have little cameras in the appropriate parts of the circuits as well which are triggered by the cars running too far. Steve Cheatham having an issue there and now Jake McAleer starting to get on his case and challenging for fourth place. The 44 car has a look, Cheatham not looking too happy there and goes wide. Back to the battling cars for 6th, 7th and 8th in Class 2. And Matt Carhenny trying to get back on the case of Richard Baston, but the battle is on for the outright lead because Pete Morris is under massive pressure here. Morris still being chased hard by the 23 car of Simon Clark. Thrilling fourth place battle. Now Jake McAleer going wide down the straight. Is he going to be able to make the position into Redgate? No, he can't quite do it. Kevin Harrison is immediately behind him. This is freeing up Chris Dyer ahead of them to maybe try and tack himself onto the battle for the lead. Baston, Kyle Henney and Wollstenholm still circulating together and I've no doubt that they are enjoying their race as much as we are watching them battling it out. Kevin Harrison starting to get back into Jake McLitz, freeing up Steve Cheatham a little bit in the Cayman ahead of those two 996s. And it's a three-way scrap for the lead now because Chris Dyer has turned up the wick and he's on the rear spoiler, the rear end of the 23 car. So Simon Clark coming under pressure, Chris Dyer. One feels that there might be a little bit extra in the tank for Chris Dyer after race number one. He's having a look, but so too now is Simon Clark, who goes to the outside line, not afraid to leave the door open on the way into Fogarty's. You just watch the... I don't think anyone's impinging track limits there, but there are some warnings, I think, going to be issued. Kevin Harrison still chasing hard in sixth place. Jake McAleer ahead of him in fifth. 
Richard Baston coming under pressure again from Matt Kyle Henney. And you can see here Max Wollstenholm's done very well here to close in, a lot closer than he was in race number one. Angus Archer goes through shot, third in class. Fourth is Steve Friedman in blue. Fifth is Paul Seagrave. And then this trio. So we've got the context to where these three are. Not that far behind Paul Seagrave at the minute here at Donington. Out of the S's along the straight. Baston still maintains that position. Sixth place in class at the minute. And those three circulating still together as we approach the half distance in this one. And again, this is Matt Carlhead, his favourite place on track. Nips down the inside line at Redgate, reclaims that position. Meanwhile, up into second now has gone Chris Dyer, and it's a Strasser 1 2, 997 leading Cayman here. And Morris is under pressure from his teammate. Let's see what Chris Dyer can do. He's looking to have a speculative gander up the inside there. I don't think he was uh, perhaps in a position to make it through, but really showing the nose of his car to Pete Morris. And one wonders whether we're going to get a different winner now because. They're almost forming a cube. I'm not saying Pete's holding them up by any stretch of the imagination. He's defending. And did you see the black and white warning flag is out for Pete Morris on the gantry? Pete Morris for track limits has got the warning. Now that will is sure to have an effect, I would have thought, on his driving because he's going to have to be very mindful of track limits now as they go side by side for the lead Chris Dyer is challenging hard but Pete Morris holding him off Simon Clark still there in third place Steve Cheatham is in fourth position and the lead trio still being chased by the trio from fourth, fifth and sixth who I think might be starting to close in but Chris Dyer here senses that he might be able to get a stab at the lead couple of lengths down at the moment as they go through McLean's and head up towards Coppice once again but we've got all the lead six cars virtually in the same shot as we approach the halfway point of the race and that shows you just how competitive this wonderful championship is here at Donington Park. Chris Dyer's through, Dyer leads, Simon Clark second, Pete Morris is going to lose fourth position as well because all over the back of him is Steve Cheatham and Morris to add insult to injury is going to get a track limit, so there's, a, there's a little bit of a clatter there with Steve Cheatham, Morris still in fourth at the moment on the inside line as they come into Redgate, Kevin Harrison in the mix as well, Cheatham will smell a bit of blood here and wants to try and go past but that, that was a lap to forget sadly for Pete Morris, so it's Chris Dyer the leader, it's Cayman's one and two with the 996 in third place. Now Steve Cheatham does go through on the inside line and past Peter Morris. Kevin Harrison coming up into the mix as well and challenging Morris, who was, you've got to say, a star in race one. Superb start for him and a great win, but it's not going to be a win here. He's got a five-second penalty, as has Trevor Lewis, running in second place in class two. Cheatham goes on the dirt. Morris comes out in sympathy. And past Morris now goes Harrison and also Andy Toon going through as well. So Pete Morris won't be uh, happy with that for sure. Ross Morris is immediately ahead of this man, Trevor Lewis, who is going to be further back now with that penalty. It'll be interesting to see whether he can get enough of a gap over the other drivers to, to maintain a podium position here for Trevor Lewis and Pete Morris is going to finish if he stays where he is a, a little way down the order there we go the top three fourth is Steve Cheatham in the black and yellow Cayman and Pete Morris now trying to get back on terms with Andy Toon Kevin Harrison in front of him so high drama at the midpoint of this race the fastest lap of the race has been set by Chris Dyer in class two, once again, it is Ross Morris. Trevor Lewis, you can see, using a, a fair amount of the kerb there. That's what the clerks are looking at. You can see the black and white flag going out. And it was also on, on the, the digital gantry that drivers have got as well. So the drivers will see that unless they're so focused on the race that they don't. But you can see there are wave flags, there are digital signs as well. Um, and uh, well it won't do the organisers any, any, har any harm to, to put the black and white flag out generally but it is going out to specific drivers so this is the battle on the road now if we can call it a battle with six or seven lengths between the two cars and Ross Morris 
and stays like this will go away with the Class 2 Championship lead. Simon Clark on the inside line here, Jake McAleer on the outside, this is the battle for second position and McAleer has got it, so it's Chris Dyer up front, Jake McAleer in second position, he was much further down, it just shows you how competitive this championship is. So Simon Clark now down to third. And after a second in race number one for Simon Clark, he'll be keen to maintain podium position. Morris and Lewis still 1-2 in class two. And a, a fair old gap back to third place in class at the moment, which is with Angus Archer. So what a weekend we've had. We had the McAleers shutting out the front row of the grid in race number one. We had both pole men in class one and class two retiring from the race. It looks like we're going to get a different winner here, at least in Class 1. Class 2, though, still headed by Ross Morris. Here is Chris Dyer, Chris having passed Richard Baston. Also the 25 car of Matt Kyle Henney and the number 12 of Max Walsenhall. Good posture from those cars going through the chicane. So Dyer is through. Jake McAleer in second place is past Kyle Henney now. Takes the outside line as they go through Redgate, Wollstoneholm having a, a good race here and he's up on terms with Matt Kyle Henney in this one. We've now got Steve Cheatham in third because Simon Clark is dropping back in the 23, so Steve Cheatham on for a podium here in 43 and that's going to be a one place improvement if he finishes there on what he achieved in race number one. Past Richard Baston goes Jake McAleer in second position and Chris Dyer still our race leader now I stand to be corrected I'm pretty sure Chris Dyer hasn't won a class one race before as Steve Freeman comes under pressure here from Paul Seagrave super race going on for these two Seagrave and Freeman are fourth and fifth at the moment through and past Matt Kyle Henney goes Kevin Harrison but here is the race leader Chris Dyer former champion which he won as we mentioned in class two several seasons ago he's the first driver to get payment onto the podium and could well be the second driver to take a win in the Cayman Simon Clark of course as I think we mentioned earlier on in the show was uh, the first winner in the Cayman of Brands Hatch last year Matt Carlheady now been passed by Max Wollstenholm so a good race from him trying to close up on Richard Baston and challenge for sixth position in class. Glenn Broster makes a neat move there down the inside of those two class two machines as well. Glenn Broster running in sixth position at the moment on the uh, adjusted times as it were. Pete Morris's penalty putting him down behind Glenn as Trevor Lewis continues on his way. You see a fair bit of gravel out there which is making life tricky as they go through the chicane. Trevor Lewis crosses the line then, second position in class, third on the clock for class two because Angus Archer will assume second position as a result of that but we're in towards the closing stages of this one, Ross Morris is clear once again in class two for Morris it looks like it's going to be virtually a, a complete, completely perfect weekend, he didn't get pole position but Two wins, two fastest laps in the offing for Ross Morris here. Chris Dyer's on the last lap of the race. Andy Toon is still busy chasing Kevin Harrison here. That is for fourth place. So it's Dyer, McAleer and Cheatham. And out of the race, sadly, after a good drive up to that point, was Max Wollstenholm. He can be proud of the overtaking and catching that he's done. But Max is our, our first retiree from the race and I suspect maybe our only retiree given we're on the last tour now as Andy Toon still gives chase of Kevin Harrison. Kevin not too far away from a podium in this one but it's going to be Cayman 966 and Cayman here with Chris Dyer still the race leader ahead of Jake McAleer in second place. So Jake will go away with a third and a second. I haven't worked the points out yet because we, we've... Uh, it does complicate things with the number of starters. It's a good move, but uh, we'll wait for the official calculations at the end of the end of the day for that. Angus Archer going through shot. He is second in class from 
Steve Freeman and Paul Seagrave. But making his way to the chequered flag, Chris Dyer takes his first outright win in the Petro Canada Lubricants Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli. Jake McAleer is second. Steve Cheatham completes the podium in third. Kevin Harrison next from Andy Toon. And it's a double win for Ross Morris here in the number three car. Morris will take the win. It's Angus Archer who will take second. Simon Clark immediately behind him is still going and nursing his car home, ninth place in class. But it's a win for Chris Dyer. Dyer takes the win from McAleer and Cheatham. Kevin Harrison fourth from Andy Toon and Ben Broster. Pete Morris next from James Cady. Ross Morris winning class two from Simon Clark. 11th goes to Angus Archer, second in class ahead of Trevor Lewis and Paul Seagrave, then Steve Freeman, Matt Carl Henny and Richard Face. The fastest laps, Chris Dyer and Ross Morris. Well, congratulations, Chris Dyer. A race victory here in race two of the day, and that was quite a race. Yeah, um, got an absolutely fantastic start. I just thought, I'm just plugging away at this. I had an awful first race. The car just felt awful in the second race because I just conserved my tyres a little bit for the first race. It just paid off with that race. It just they just were unbelievable. Just just a mega amount of grip. So uh, really, really happy. It were great. Really good. Well, uh, Jake McAleer, congratulations. Third place in the first race. Up one further step on the podium in race two, but you had to work for that one. Yeah, once again, I made a real mess at the start. It's really something I'm going to have to work on because um, you're making life so hard for yourself before you've even begun. But um, yeah, pulled off a decent recovery drive back up to second. It's just just a bit frustrating because you always want that win, don't you? Yeah, I mean, obviously I was a bit disappointed with race one, but I think to come away from the, my first race weekend in class one with two podiums, I'd have snapped your hand off with that yesterday. So, yeah, I've got to be happy. That was a really close race though, wasn't it? The kind of race that we often see from this championship. Yeah, it was uh, It was good and I, I'm happy that I've managed to keep with a pack for most of the race. That's the main thing. So, if you're sticking with a, with a pack, then anything can happen. You know, you can, you, can, you can get in the mix and you can end up with podiums. So, yeah, brilliant. Well, uh, congratulations Ross, double class two victory here at uh, Donington Park. But I tell you what, Trevor wasn't a million miles back through the middle portion of that race, was he? No, he, he had some good pace in that race and he didn't give me a chance to relax. I had to keep pushing all race take a few of the curbs, try and stay ahead. So yeah, he kept me honest. Yeah, towards the, the middle part of the race in the end, the tyres had gone completely off and the brakes were going. So when Trevor eased off a bit, it gave me a chance to just relax and bring the brakes back. But yeah, the tyres are awful now. <laughs> New set maybe for, uh, for Brands Hatch next time out. Are you looking forward to Brands Hatch? Looking forward to it, but with class two, we have to keep the same set of tyres for two meetings. So I'll have to try and race on them now. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Well, Trevor Lewis, congratulations. Two second place finishes here at uh, Donington Park. Yep. In that one, though, it looked like you had pace that was a bit closer to that of, of Ross's, particularly through the middle portion of the race. Uh, yes, yes. And we were just about even Stevens, I think, all the way through. Um, but uh, being a bit of a fool, at the end, I thought, two laps in the end, I can't catch him, preserve the car. Little did I realise I'd been given a five second penalty and we lost second place by one second. So all I should have done was keep my toe in because we didn't realise we got a penalty. But hey, that's the way it goes, isn't it, you know? As we leave Donington Park, the championship table looks like this. Chris Dyer leads Class 1 from Jake McAleer, just a point behind. A further point behind him is Pete Morris from Steve Cheatham, Simon Clark and Kevin Harrison in six. Division two, no mistaking Ross Morris, 13 points clear of Trevor Lewis from Angus Archer and Steve Freeman. Paul Seagrave is fifth ahead of Richard Baston. That wraps up our coverage from here at Donington Park. Many thanks for watching. We hope that you'll join us next time out on the Grand Prix circuit at Brands Hatch.